I don't think we ever talk about just how messed up this was for Usopp to do. Especially in the live action. Like, look at everyone panicking. Everyone's so sick of them. Like, it was always something that was kind of lame to begin with. But now you really feel like, man, Usopp was kind of a loser. Nami. What? Okay, but I really do like this flag. It screams childhood ambition to me. Honestly, you should have kept it. Not me, I think the toilet's busted. We don't have a toilet. Am I the only one who thought that this meant that Zoro did his business in a random part of the ship? I was like, is Nami going to go unclog something? Oh, and then you put the stale in your ear. Stop doing that. Guys, okay, crew meeting. Not a crew. This line feels really weird to me, right? Like episode one, they're not really a crew, they're just kind of traveling together. But then in Orange Town, we're like, yeah, we're gonna come back and we're gonna save our captain. And now we're back to not a crew anymore? We're gonna need a better ship if we want to make it to the Grand Line. A real pirate ship. That brings us to the Going Merry. When I first saw the Going Merry, it looked horrifying in the live action. It just doesn't have that same cute charm of the original. Maybe it's because it has a more realistic goat head. Maybe it's because the mouth is open. The fact that we're seeing it from this camera angle kind of makes it better. But I don't know how I feel about having any close-ups of the Mary. And this guy will sell it to us. Technically, I'm not a salesman. You know, I thought I would miss out on his nose, but honestly, I think that might have been distracting. Kai's giving me an open invitation to drop by anytime I want. Oh, I never use a front entrance. This is more of a VIP entrance reserved for special guests. Oh, and he has that like self-aggrandizing, he thinks he's really great until proven otherwise kind of energy. Yo, that's really aggressive. Like, calm down, butler. Don't, don't touch me. What a wonderful surprise. Oh, I can't believe they've done it. They've given him the golden poop emblems. Oh, the, bu <laughs> the butler did. uniform is so dumb looking. The commitment. So nice to meet you. You all must stay for dinner. <laughs> the immediate reaction from Luffy, like, oh, dinner, you say. When do we eat? You don't. Not dressed like that. What's up with that? I think they're pretty dripped out. He cannot be talking when he's dressed like that. I wanted to give you your birthday present. A giant pearl! Sorry, it is. <laughs> Alright, this is a cute dynamic. There's something charming about her getting engrossed into this story. Ooh, and how Usopp immediately changes from being lighthearted into a more cautious tone. Why would anyone even need this many clothes? It's not about need with these people, it's about want. Ooh, tear him down, Navi. These people? Quote unquote people? I bet I can convince Kaya to give us that ship. And when you can't, we go with your plan. Steal one and move on. Ooh, I like this change. Luffy is putting his ideals on the line. Like if he can't convince Kaya to give the crew a ship, then he would have to break his own ethics and actually steal a ship. Okay, that's a pretty cute moment. With that throw, it makes me buy into their friendship a lot more. It's like they're getting to know each other and their own taste and everything. Solid. Careful, you idiot. Oh! Oh, this guy's the cat guy! Don't worry, the brain cells have activated. I now realize the plot. I don't remember if that was in the original, but I really like that change. That the baddies were there planning Kaya's death the whole time. I'm sorry, sir. It won't happen again. It won't. Okay, but seriously, how do you mess up cleaning this cup so bad? I agree with Claudora on this one. Should've fired her. Reminds me of that one time I slayed a dragon, ate the whole thing myself. You ever had a dragon? Nope. Do you have dragon? Afraid we're fresh out. Oh, the amount of sass on that take. I like how she could have been like, you're an idiot, but instead she's like, uh, no, actually we ran out. You manage all of Kaya's finances. Oh, yes. You know, I've always been interested. Whoa, 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 hey, hands off Mary. We do not try to riz up Mary. I love that dress on you. Belong to my mother. Oh, I'm sorry. I... <laughs> I love that Nobby has to reconcile with the fact that billionaires have souls. The distraught of being like, oh, you have a backstory. You look familiar. Highly doubtful, sir. Mirror Ball Island. Oh, Mirror Ball Island. I like that we're using Zoro as a bounty hunter to pry into Clodor. That is a really good change. He's like, yeah, I saw you dancing at Mirrorball Island. Combine that with Mary being like, there's some sussy, sussy stuff that Clodor is trying to do. I'd love to try the fish tonight. I'm sorry, Miss Kaya, but that is not possible. 
Like, not only do I feel bad for Kaya, but now Clodor feels like a really big red flag, right? Especially because Clodor won't even let her have any fish. Ooh, that does look good, though. I don't know, Kaya. This is pretty tempting. Luffy, isn't there something that you wanted to talk to Kaya about? While I've been focused a lot on Clodor, this entire dinner scene is really strong. We have shots of Luffy being gluttonous and selfish. We got Clodor trying to make sure everything goes according to plan. We get Kaya who can be seen visibly suppressing her frustration and lack of autonomy. We have Usopp being the middleman to almost every character, while also trying to fulfill his promise. We want to buy a ship from you. Usopp mentioned that you're sailors. Nope, we're pirates. Oh buddy, I love how it feels like almost every character is walking on eggshells. And then Luffy's over here stomping. We have already defeated an evil clown, raided a marine base, taken down a captain with an axe. You sound a lot like your adventures, Usopp. So Kaya doesn't really believe Usopp, but I wonder how much different it would be if she did believe that they were actually pirates. Getting started. Oh, and what is he doing? Like, even though he's toned down, scenes like this feel like a lot. It spoke to me. That's the ship we need to follow our dreams. I promise you we'll take care of it. Truly like any other member of our crew. Because the ship is also a home. But he sells this moment. Just seeing Kai's expression, like to some degree, she believes this. I don't know how far that alone would have taken him, but that speech had soul in it. Now look what you've done. You've upset Miss Kaya. That's pretty rude of him. Even Kaya's like, no, they're chill. What are you doing? <laughs> I get it, man. Why are you looking at me like that? This whole notion of transferring the shipbuilding business to you is highly unusual. Oh, they're on to you, Clodor. If that's even your real name. I would still like to discuss the matter with Miss Kaya. These are... That's a red flag, Mary. Man, Mary had some backbone. I mean, it's not gonna go well for him, but I respect it. <laughs> All right, this is really stupid. Lore accurate, though. I'm glad they went for it. Oh, Mary! They actually got him! He's like dead in one piece? That's not supposed to happen! Oh, she 180'd. That's right, billionaires don't have souls. Nami? Ooh, awkward. Awkward that you didn't have a backup strategy. Just put it behind your back, that's it? That's all you got? If there's a need, family, friends. So we're friends now? You don't even know me. You know, I never considered the amount of, like, isolation that Kaya is experiencing because of Clodor. Like, if not for Usopp, she has, like, nobody her age talking to her. I don't want your pity. Well, you won't get it then. Like, here we really dive into Kaya just wanting to be a normal person and have people treating her like one. Is she your girlfriend or something? What? Ooh, this has strong thing? will they won't they energy. You don't think she like, like likes me, do you? <laughs> okay, we have downgraded into like third graders talking during recess. Never mind. Also, it's nice that we're taking the time to just learn about the characters. We're not really progressing the story as much as we're just getting a calm moment where the characters are interacting. I don't blame him. That didn't look bad. Zoro? I know the whole point is that the enemy pirates are incompetent, but like, man, you really just left Mary in the cellar? I guess maybe it doesn't matter if you plan to kill everyone right here. I knew I'd see your face somewhere on a wanted poster. Now this is a really good change. Zoro had his eye on claw door, and now we know why. <laughs> That's incredibly cheesy. Oh, so anticlimactic. Usopp, buddy, you were right there. Why didn't you say anything? You really just let him down like that. Oh, no. I didn't think there would be hissing. I respect the commitment. Dispose of the bodies outside of the house this time. So with this change, it makes Clador seem a lot more competent and makes his goons seem really incompetent. Like what he's planning isn't actually his fault, just his teammates severely lacking. What about Usopp? He got away. Let him say whatever he wants. No one will believe him anyway. Ooh, that's sinister. We are really giving Usopp his lowest point. Pirates, help, please, help! The Enough, Usopp, go home! Everyone's already sick of him during the day. Imagine during the night, like, wow. That is a really brutal change. Let me go! 
He's at it again, Bankina. Going on and on about pirates coming. Okay, I gotta know. Is this just a me thing? Like, I don't hate Usopp's backstory. I like that we get to see why he's screaming pirates. He just wants his dad to come home. But did we need to hear about this story right now? Also, is this mom dead? Like, did, he, did she just die right here? <laughs> I don't... <laughs> it just feels kind of forced. I don't know. Pirates are here. They really are. Why won't anybody believe me? Oh, but that's really good acting on Usopp's part. This is beautiful. I believe you. Oh, that's a really good way to intersect the stories, though. Kobe's actually gonna do something on Sierra Village? Arlong wants a word. Uh-oh. You can see the visible uh-oh on his face. That one takes the cake as like the cheesiest one that we have seen so far. I wasn't the biggest fan of Arlong's Wanted poster, but that animation kind of makes up for it. It's great that we're making Arlong way more aggressive. Like the East Blue Saga played it very loose with how integral all the characters were. But here everything feels a lot more condensed, a lot more cohesive. Oh, and he got kidnapped. That's rough, buddy. Okay, I know why we're doing this from a narrative perspective. Like, we can't just kill off one of the main cast right here. But I just find it weird that we never, never kill the characters, even though we can clearly finish him off. Like, instead of making sure he's dead, they're just like, yeah, whatever, just throw him in that hole. It's fine. He's totally dead. I guess they're incompetent. Is that a good in-world reason? Oh, okay. I don't know how I feel about this change. Like, this is a weird time to implement this, right? Oh, buddy, you're getting whooped. Ooh. Like, here he's grabbing the sword. I don't know, man. You would have lost a couple of times. Oh, and that flip. I think we have gotten more time in Zoro's flashback than in Usopp's flashback. In his own arc, the disrespect. I know I can't be you. It's these bamboo swords. Let's find real blades to see who's best. I don't know if that's a good idea, man. Did you see what happened back there? He's going for it, though. Like, she <laughs> she easily could have ended him multiple times. Buddy, you're slipping. Yeah, that's as good as I thought it would go. It feels like we have to justify a reason for the flashback and the well is how we're doing it. I don't know, I felt like I would have liked it better if we didn't have a flashback. Rowan no Zoro. About to fight, train, and kick your butt every single day. Like in a vacuum, I'm not against it. I think this is cute. But did we need it right here during this section of the arc? I don't know. The winner is... There was an accident. <laughs> we chose to cut down these stairs. Unbelievable. It's probably for the best. The fact that we don't know that the stairs got her makes this a little bit of a better story. We've heard reports of pirates in the area. What? What are you talking about? He is a pirate. He murdered Mary. Arrest him. What are you waiting for? The fact that he doesn't have any evidence and everyone already thinks he's a liar, that puts him in a really bad spot. I get that Kobe still isn't extremely confident as a Marine, but the fact that there's like a reported pirate gang and a couple of murders, and you just let this guy go back in, that's pretty sus, right? And then Luffy comes out limping. What's wrong with him? That's what I'm saying. What's that? Old houses? That's a red flag, Kobe. You gotta go in there. I get why you saw red off. You just heard a ton of violence in there and you're like, well, not going in there. You invited them. No, not those pirates. The other pirates. You're in danger. Please While you could argue that, that the characters are flawed in some regard, I think that makes for really interesting characters. How about I ring for Cloudo? We can have some- No, don't! Like, they don't gotta be perfect, and you can judge them, but that makes for really fascinating decisions that they make. I believed your stories because they were fun. This one isn't. This isn't a story, it's the truth. You gotta listen to me! <laughs> oh, like that! Oh, oh, that hurt the soul. Like in this scene, I can sympathize both with Kaya and Usopp. I can feel how frightened Kaya is. Like kind of wanting to believe Usopp, but also not wanting to believe him. She also now has to reevaluate her entire circumstances with Kalador. Ooh, this is a strong shift towards a horror vibe. That's a good change. Not even Kaya's gotta believe him, right? Oh, and if not, we got Nami. Why wouldn't we be alive? Oh, we committed to this. Oh, the outfits. I gave you that tea. Kaya, 
When did you start getting sick? Was it around the time Kuro started working here? I think it was a little bit more ambiguous in the manga, but I really love the implication that Claudor was behind this. That he had been slowly poisoning Kaya this entire time. Yes! Yes, I love this. We're leading into the horror vibes. Syrup Village honestly got the golden adaptation treatment. As someone who is not the biggest fan of Syrup Village, this is an amazing change. Mostly because we don't even know that much about Claudor's backstory. Like his reasoning was always really shoddy to me. And again, the fact that it's kept ambiguous makes this way better for me. You got something to say. <laughs> That is, that is dumb. I guess that's how he survived the poison. You know what? Sure. Hold her right there. By order of the Marines, I'm placing you under arrest. I think it's a good change for season one for us to see a lot of Kobe's character development that he, that he just doesn't have in the original. We see him grow a backbone and understand his core philosophy. I want to direct orders to bring you in. I've had a lot of problems with the cinematography of the live action. In almost every shot, it feels like we're looking into the character's nostrils. But for Surf Village, since we are already leaning into the scary atmosphere, it is like the one time where it truly fits. <laughs> what was the plan there? There you go, Usopp. Show up how it's done. Because that was terrible. Okay, yeah, you didn't do so hot. Honestly, the fact that Claudor didn't just stab you is a win. Oh, he really went for it. He committed. <laughs> they really keep it up. The fact that Claudor never meows, though, a little bit disappointing, Claudor. Freedom. There's no such thing with a bounty on your head. You gave up on your dream. No one who does that can ever call themselves a pirate. Man, this is such a good line. I'm conflicted because I don't know what's happening, but there are times where we say really subtle stuff, like doing what you want is the definition of piracy. And then there's times where Luffy plainly just says, oh, I'm not like a bad type of pirate, I'm a good pirate. And I can feel the dichotomy of the writing. Oh, that's a strong left hook. You can even see his reaction. He did not expect that. And also shout out to like the costume and makeup department because Claudor from this point on looks unhinged. <laughs> Immediate brain damage. Also, Claudor's exit felt a lot more grounded. It just goes to prove how well Ovita's shot was. I think the live action officially changed my opinion on Surf Village. Like, man, this is such a good adaptation of it. Also, I didn't expect to like his minions that much, but they played the role well. That looks just like your lawyer friend. Mary ran the shipyard after my parents passed. I hereby name this ship the Going Mary. That is a pretty cute reason why it's called the Going Mary. Also, I still can't believe, like, he's dead. <laughs> like, I still can't believe that he actually died. Get your stuff. What stuff? You're coming with us, right? What? We didn't actually uh, dabble too much in the Usopp and Kaya relationship uh, in the original, but I feel like there's a lot more added tension with the romance. Like, if Usopp's now leaving, what does this mean for them? How would these two characters dramatically change their lives now that so many new things are gonna happen? And honestly, it raises some really good questions as to how things would look when Usopp comes back. Conceptually, that is a really strong change that the original never explored. That's why he didn't have a long nose. <laughs> Honestly, if that's the sole reason, I'm okay with it. Oh, again, I haven't really been talking about it, but the soundtrack, oh, that is so beautiful. I didn't get loose. Don't be too hard on yourself. The real lesson here, always have a backup plan. I don't know if that was the true lesson, Garp. I don't, honestly, I don't know how I feel about him as a character in the adaptation. It feels like his intentions so far are all over the place. Or maybe it's just how he presents himself. Like the weird ways that the character thinks and acts that is weird to me. Marines, we're under attack! <laughs> I love how he's standing there just like, hello. Grandpa? Grandpa. Oh, spoilers. 400 chapters deep and you throw it out in season one. It doesn't ruin the adaptation, but man, 
would it hurt if you just finished reading in this lobby? Uh, anyways, thanks to all my patrons who are dressed up in cat outfits uh, with swords and are chasing random people in a furry convention. I want to stress that they are just pirates in cat outfits, not furries. It can be very confusing because they're both wearing cat outfits with claws on them, sometimes very sharp. But I just want to reassure you that some of them are pirates.